Daniela Levitt. I'm married to Thomas, and my company is The Golden Fleece in Santa Cruz, which is an established yarn store that we took over about eight months ago. Um, I was the knitting doctor in five different yarn stores in the Bay Area over the last seven or eight years, which meant that my job was to help people with whatever they needed help with. Solve their problems, teach them how to do something, fix it, you know, that sort of thing. And I'm Thomas, and I am the husband, and uh, I helped her acquire the store because we actually borrowed the capital to acquire the store from my mother at a competitive interest rate on both ends. Yeah. Well, hurdle number one would really be the fact that I didn't want a yarn store at all to begin with. Um, I People have been telling me since the very first place I was asked, oh, should you get your own yarn store? Why don't you have your own place? Open your own store. And I've always been, no, no, don't want anything to do with it, don't want to deal with the paperwork. And then for some reason I sort of started muttering to myself for the last few months, I want my own damn yarn store. And I guess the universe heard me. I was working at one store on a Thursday night, and as I was leaving, um, the owner said, oh, by the way, I got an email from Margaret. She's selling the store. And I went, oh, didn't think anything of it. Went to dinner two days later with my husband and my best friend and said to Thomas as a total joke, I said, oh, by the way, Margaret's selling the Golden Fleece. Buy me a yarn store. And he goes, well, find out what she wants for it. Okay, um, I'll do that. And two weeks later, the store was mine. It was just insane how everything came into place. But my initial resistance to even own a store, I think, is like the biggest thing so far. Yeah, well, I mean, she was creating lots of value for other people and learning a lot in the process. But I, I had been feeling for a while that, like, it was time for her to be able to capture more of the value of what she was creating. And the logical way to do that was to open a yarn store. And uh, to me, the hurdle was starting one from scratch. Uh, you know, and all the things that are associated with that in terms of uh, uh, getting vendor lines of credit and uh, all, uh, you know, the processes and, and all the relationships that go along with that. And uh, so we needed to buy an existing yarn store. And there aren't too many yarn stores that come up for sale in a small county like Santa Cruz, where there's, I think four. there's like four yarn four. stores right now. There used to be a different four. Uh, and uh, then uh, one closed and another one opened. So this was the one that was available. It's five minutes away from our house. Um, it's in a very good location for uh, people coming from over the hill. So it seemed like the ideal match. And it was also a store that like had uh, lost a significant percentage of its marketability as a business because the owner just hadn't had the time to keep it up. So it was affordable relatively speaking what we paid for the store is about like half to a third of what many other stores that have come up for sale in this area have uh, asked for so uh, it was basically a remodeling project and she's the ideal person to do it because she has the existing business and clients and this store has been in business for 11 years so it's a long history. Years. In the 17 years. Okay. 17 yeah, the previous years. owner owned it for 11 years. Okay. 17 years. And uh, she has a very large following over the hill. Significant percentage of which we're willing to follow her, especially since all they have to do is right, get right off the freeway and come here. They don't have to venture further into Santa Cruz. They don't have to go in areas where like, maybe there's a perception that it's not as consumer friendly or safe. And also a lot of people it's a day trip to Santa Cruz that includes the yarn store. It's a great excuse for a day trip. Or the day trip is a great excuse to visit the yarn store, depending on which partner is involved. Exactly. Yeah. 
the hardest thing to sort of wrap my head around is, I think, the ordering of yarn more than anything. Managing inventory sucks. It's, you never know what's going to actually move. And it's really difficult to figure out how to spend your money wisely in that sense. Um, I first, I, so I got the store in April, right? And I thought I was being really conservative when I placed my first order with one of my major vendors. And then when all the stuff came in, it was early June, no, it was late May. And I realized that I had bought all this wonderful winter yarn, like all this soft alpaca, thick and chunky and warm. And here we were going into June. So it's like, oh, crud, I should think differently when I do this and not just buy the yarn I like. So, so that, no, this is our first venture into retail. I've run my own business my entire life. She has some historical experience. I grew up in retail. Yeah. Uh, we totally underestimated the uh, amount of inventory yes. that was actually here and the amount of inventory we needed to have. So we had to actually go back to the well to get more capital <coughs> uh, to stock it up. And I subsidized, put, poured more of my own income into this uh, for several months. Uh, and uh, we gave my mother, who we initially borrowed the first batch of money from, an equity stake in the corporation. Since this is an, I always do my stuff as a corporation, uh, in return for uh, substantial further investment in inventory. Now this store is full. Ish. R ish. More full. It was almost empty, so I, we it poured was. like fifty, sixty thousand dollars or least. more of positive cash flow from the store, from my business and my income and investment from my mother into this, and we just we didn't realize that, you know. So that was an extra, no, it, it very was... large extra chunk of initial mm -hmm. money that was not in the initial acquisition budget. Yeah. So we wound up paying effectively paying a lot more for the store than we originally anticipated, which is fine because a lot of it's come from the cash flow, but still, I mean, if I was going to do this again, I would definitely put a lot more thought into really valuing what the actual inventory is and how much capital needs to go into the business. As far as day-to-day -day running the business, I just tap into a lot of what I've done and what I've seen and what I've learned in other stores I've been in and how things have been done that I didn't like and then I do them differently. Um, the customers are an awesome resource because they'll tell you exactly what they want and how it's always been done before and what they don't like about how it was done before. Um, the previous owner has been wonderful. I mean, it was, you know, I could call her up and ask her or send her an email and ask her. She, she completely changed careers. She went to nursing school. And what do you know, you can't go to nursing school full time and run a yarn store at the same time. Who knew, right? So I've been I've gotten a lot of information from her about how to do this and how to do that and and sort of some of the um, the credit that the business had established from before, um, kind of sneaking in under the radar a little bit there. Calling and placing an order for the Golden Fleece without necessarily saying that hi, I'm the new owner of the Golden Fleece and therefore having to Re-establish credit with everything and everybody. That's been incredibly helpful. Um, most of my, I, actually, I think all of my vendors at this point know that I am me and no longer, no longer the former owner. So, and so I that's don't all. I think any of them have been super uptight about that. No, they haven't. They've been really good and helpful. Um, so, but still, it was a little stressful in the beginning. It was like, ah, where's all this money going to come from? Um, online, lots of stuff you find out online. You know, how do you? Do X, well, Google will tell you. Always at the edge of the abyss of inventory. There's, there's not enough. There's not enough space. I don't. People always say, "Oh, I love this yarn. Do you have any more of this in the back?" And I'm like, "I don't have it in the back." Um, so, in my perfect world, I would get a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow and plow it into a lot of inventory, and I'd be a very happy girl. Um, that's not very really likely to happen unless you know somebody. Um, but that's, yeah, inventory. Inventory, inventory, inventory. Which means cash flow. <laughs> the ability to order it and uh, be able to hold it and, and 
while, while it's not quite being sold yet. You know, so we're always, right now, I mean, we've only had the store since April. And the uh, money that is earned from it, most of it goes right back into the store, into building inventory and other things like that. Uh, so uh, the cash incoming has to match the cash outgoing since we don't have a conventional financing line of credit or anything else like that, which is also, you know, as you're well aware, you haven't been in business as a corporation for three years. You have no credit. You will get no credit. The banks won't talk to you unless you have stellar personal credit that you're willing to encumber. So financing and uh, credit and uh, cash flow are, you know, really an abyss. If we, a lot of times it's kind of like Wile E. Coyote. You go over the edge, and as long as you don't actually realize you're over the edge, you're fine. You're running just fine. But, just don't you know, look down. Don't look down, yeah. Customers. My customers. Absolutely my customers. This is sort of a yarn store slash community center. I mean, officially I close at 6 o'clock every day except for Tuesday when I open. I'm open until night because we do social knitting at night. Um, and usually I have people coming in at about 5.30, 6, 6.30. They go home at 10, 10.30, 11. You know, it's, it's the hangout. It's awesome. The first yarn store that I actually worked in, um, the owner of that store, Jan, she was just marvelous. And she's been extremely helpful. And she's coming with us on the retreat that we're doing in a couple of weeks. And she's going to teach a class, and she just, her store was just the perfect yarn store of all yarn stores in the history of yarn stores, period. So there was much gnashing of teeth and wailing when that store closed, and she has been very inspirational and very supportive, to the point where my daughters, who have both been helping me, um, they were complaining about something that I was doing that they didn't quite like how I was doing. Um, and so they looked at me and they said, would Jan really do this? And then my other daughter said, yeah, WWJD, what would Jan do? <laughs> so it's like she's somewhat, you know, sanctified. But no, she's been extremely helpful. Very, very astute businesswoman, excellent marketer, just impeccable style, wonderful person.